Welcome everybody to our Out of a Sean podcast. I'm Co. And I'm Yao. And we're back again with another great discussion. Discussion about life, the future. But most importantly, we want to talk about education. Mm-hmm. And why is education important? Is it important? What is you know, what is education? Honestly, you worked in education all this time, and we say that so much, and I hate these cliche terms. You know, we gotta dig a little deeper. What is in reality education, Co? What is education and how do we know what is supposed to be the standard for education? Because one edu- one perspective of education, like say we're in the English sector, but then the Chinese have their education. These people have their education. What exactly is education? For me, in a nutshell, is knowledge. Now, we, we can go into different discussions on how that knowledge is acquired, where mm. that knowledge comes from. You, mm-hmm. As you said, standards, what standards people put on the knowledge that has been given. But ultimately, knowledge is all around you. The reason why education is so important because it deals with the mind. It unlocks the mind. It allows mm-hmm. the mind to go into so many different spheres, elements of creativity, of logic, of philosophy. The mind is so much. But This is our storehouse. This is our CPU. Just as we, we're sitting on a computer right now, our brain is that central processing unit to determine the things we regurgitate, regurgitate, the things we hear, the things we see. Our whole being starts all in our mind. But how do you acquire and process that knowledge? That is the most um, unique characteristic and ability we have that separates us from every other animal or mammal there is. So, for example, um, education. You hear the term, education's power. That's true. In some cases, I've heard people say education is the new currency. It's the new currency that one must have in order to survive in this current world in which we live in. The ability to reason, the ability to critically think, the ability to analyze, the the ability to make decisions. It all derives on the education or the knowledge that you have at your disposal that you can utilize to make informed and better choices as you navigate through society. Man, you just made me think of something. So the education, if your base is wrong, Mm -hmm. if your CPO has a bug in it, Mm -hmm. your ability to analyze, critically think and stuff is gonna be what? Corrupted. Off keel, right? Mm -hmm. Because you think about the book that um, Carter G. Woodson created or wrote, which was the miseducation of the Negro. And he Mm -hmm. says that no one has actually studied the Negro to speak from his perspective in eons of time. Obviously, we had our own educational systems because you see it displayed in the Sphinx and and what uh, throughout all of the the Garden or AKA Africa that shows that there was obviously civilization and logic and knowledge and education and so forth and so on. Right. But as of recent, for the past several <laughs> thousand years, it's been somewhat uh, different. So uh, I, I didn't want to necessarily cut you off, but when you analyze or you critically think through something, if your base is off, how do we make, how do how does one know that they're having the proper education or the right information? Well, see, that's what comes back to the ability to critically, critically think. I'm, I'm a firm believer in asking questions. Even if I know the answer, I'm going to ask a question because I oftentimes I realize that there's other people in the room who may not be um, have the courage to ask it. So let me ask it for them to get that clarity, and that answer, that response. But ultimately, the ability to create critical thinking reason to come to that conclusion, because what you see sometimes will go in direct conflict with what you believe your ideals or what you have been taught, because that whole exchange of information, if something is somebody's teaching you something, how are you receiving it? Because I can say one plus one and prove it to you that it equals two every time. But if the lens you're operating, you're misinterpreting the addition sign for a subtraction sign or for a multiplication sign, that has to be corrected. But it then has to be proven as well. So you have to be able to see without a reasonable doubt that, okay, if you follow this algorithm, this formula, I'm giving you examples. This is how I came to this conclusion. Now, use your logic for what you believe in. Can you do the same thing? If not, you will have to ask yourself, okay, I'm off. Why am I off? Why is this off? How did I come to this wrong conclusion? What, what, From what medium or what starting point am I gauging myself in order that has brought me to this end result? 
And a lot of times we can see it in life. We can see it in our own lives. We can see it in other people's lives. We can see it in the world around us. You know, mm -hmm. when we were growing up, we, we were always hearing about how the ozone layer has a hole in it. You remember they used to tell us don't mm -hmm. use aerosol sprays because it's opening up <laughs> the ozone layer. And then yeah. at some point in time, we're all going to burn. We haven't stopped using aerosols. But you see the talk of ozone is like, there's no longer. Matter of fact, I, saw, I read a report a couple weeks ago that said the ozone layer is closing now. So? I said, hold up. So once again, it goes back to the education. Let, let's look at the food groups. Remember when we were growing up, it was the five food groups. You remember the food pyramid? Mm -hmm. That was the holy grail of nutrition of how we we're supposed to move. Mm -hmm. Do you know that that system no longer exists? It has changed. I'm like, hold up. Why did it change? Because if we were supposed to eat fruits, vegetables, and then the pyramid shows about how much grains. Remember grains? You're supposed to eat all this stuff. Now when you go look at it, it's totally different. So somebody changed it and said, okay, what you were taught is no longer valid. This is the new definition, or this is the new standard by which you need to move by. So there we go again. There goes narrative. So <laughs> all of it is, is all intertwined. So then it goes back to my question. What is education? What is education? If you're not educating yourself from your perspective, then that means you're being educated from someone else's perspective. Which the is indoctrination. There we go. Now we're getting into it. It's indoctrination, indoctrination, or some would call brainwash. And I don't think brainwash is necessarily a bad thing, but when it's done in ill repute or if it's done at, to misuse somebody, because we all use each other, but misuse or to um, to um, capitalize, if I can use that term, on someone's um, ignorance or to deceive or to throw them off in order to advance an agenda or your thoughts or your ideals now we're walking in a whole nother space so you know even for us as we begin to um reapproach and rediscern what education means we have to now read uh rediscover what does um success mean you know mm -hmm. we talk about when we when we're talking to the students in zambia earlier today is what is third world versus first world how are we defining that is materialism in a system that is unsustainable, really first world, or is that third world? These well, are, this is where the, this is that Timothy, we talked about, I think, previous episodes about the, the uh, you don't know right from right, uh, right from left anymore, because for somebody, their truth is this, and my truth is this. For me, there's only one truth, but you have different perspectives of the truth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Case in point, uh, uh, sorry, case in point, you think about um, the airplane. There's a standard that it, according to um, physics and such, the, 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 the plane has to have a certain length and certain things. There's certain standards or building the code. Everything has to be, you can't skip or put your own this and your own that. It has to be according to law, law of the aerodynamics, yeah, law right. of of gravity law of this those are the real laws there is human law which we have you know like don't jaywalk don't do this don't do this. that's human law but, but then there's the most highest law mm -hmm. that is the super superseding law you was it, about to say something though. when i say you can call it universal law like it's not yeah. going to change no matter who you are which it, it, that law stays the same so the education needs to be based in those principles mm -hmm. of universality according to your perspective or your cultural identity. Mm -hmm. So if you've been stripped of a cultural identity and you're only seeing things through another person's lens, a lion can never be a, a giraffe. He, he could try, she could try, it can try, but it's never gonna be enough. So you, once again, that's a part of the ramifications or the residue of enslavement was you're never enough so you're always the first african-american to do this or the first one to do this or he's the first asian to do this or the first mexican there's always the the in the the the, the categorization mm -hmm. or the categorizing of an individual so that it it sends the what the narrative out so it goes into the subconscious of subpar or oh my gosh they're good enough to do this or so all of these narratives it it brings you. So education, again, with our, say, our STARS initiatives and the things we're doing is to deconstruct ideals that has been given in Western concepts, which is one thing. And there are 
like you said, knowledge, all knowledge is the most highest knowledge. All, all good, all truth is the most highest truth, right? Or all truth is God's truth. Mm -hmm. But you have to know how to discern those truths in order to understand that you have the truth. Now you may have your perspective of the truth, how you approach it, so forth and so on. That's one thing. That's, that's individualistic, that's group, that's community-based, that's perspective, male, female, gender, all kinds of different ways and perspectives that you will approach the truth. But the truth is the truth. If you jump off the building, I don't care if you're a male, female, if you're of a LGBTQ community, if you're not LGBTQ community, if you're old, if you're young, if you jump off the building, universal law or perspective or principle is going to say you will be hurt or you will die easy what goes up must come down <laughs> so <gonna> once we start teaching education from those perspectives then the playing field becomes a little different a lot of our education is really based like you said the food group was milk milk pasteurized milk really we're supposed to be drinking that all the time <laughs> all it, it, the what see, see and that goes back to the basis it's overconsumption. Because mm. even just staying on the topic of food, the the issues that befall us are it's not that this is wrong or that's wrong. It's it will be wrong. It will make you sick when you do it three, four times a day. Mm -hmm. So as, as when, we, when we were in a garden and we were just looking at some of the farms and looking at the animals graze, chickens, we were asking ourselves like, how much chicken do we eat? Because it takes time for one chicken to grow. And I can see, you can name hundreds. I mean, there's millions of chickens being consumed every day. How every are we five able, minutes. How are we keeping up with the demand? Because there's got to be some fake stuff in there somewhere. Because the time is just not on our side. Based on the slaughter, the, the process of going from the egg to fully grown. We're like, hold up. There's got to be something in this system that's off here. But the, the ultimate thing is, once again, it's about balance. It's about understanding what works for you. Because clearly there's certain foods I eat that have a negative impact on me versus others. Once I understand it, but how would I know that if I've never been taught my DNA, my body structure, the elements from which I grew and what works for me. But I can rate or I can take that back to our homeland to see how did they eat? Oh, they only ate, even we jokingly, we talked about the scripture sometimes where it talks about oftentimes when you look at the classes, People didn't eat a lot of meat. That only came whether you're working, whether you lived in the king in the king's palace, where they had all that at their exposure, <laughs> or when there was a party or an event taking place, and they'll say, "Go cut the calf or go cut the animal," or when they were going to make a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. But this wasn't McDonald's on for breakfast, McDonald's again for lunch, and then when we go to Chick Fil A for dinner, uh, the tomorrow I'm going to hit up the uh, the carry out to get some chicken wings. I'm going to have another mm -hmm. steak. Do you see the overconsumption? Because our bodies can't even keep up with this stuff because we're out of whack. We're out of balance. So we don't have to be a scientist to understand that something is bad in is going to produce something bad out. Like is it is an easy universal law for us to understand, which is a part of what keeps things going. Right. You 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 put you make it marketable where you want to overconsume, And sometimes you sometimes you're not even hungry, but it looks so good. You be on you be watching the game football or basketball or anything and then they got a pizza hut commercial or wings or whatever you like food oh, uh, man, that looks so good and then you're gonna eat it you're not even hungry what? you're not even hungry but the simple image you start to like pavlov's dog you eat me like mm. you can smell the pizza without even being in the room with the pizza it's so imaging, immediately imaging is the most powerful thing the power of the eyes the lust mm. of the flesh the lust of the eye and the, and pride, the pride of life. life these principles and that's why the scriptures are so awesome in that it gives you principles that if you live by those principles no matter where you are in your walk in your yeah, life true. you can assess and begin to have control over your consumption because when you're in these societies you can't avoid certain things. So we understand that's what I always tell my daughter. You can't avoid um, not using the internet, but I want you, I want to see if you have the ability to maintain Manage. and exactly. So then it doesn't make them feel like, oh, see, I can't, that's too extreme. How am I supposed to get in contact with my friends? How am I gonna know about this? How am I gonna know about that? Okay, you can know about these things, but I need to always do a heat check to make sure that it's not consuming you. Because once it begins to consume you, then you lose control. And now you just become 
a product. There you you go. become a consumer. You're no longer a human being anymore. You are now just there to be consumed and to consume. Because so, mm. you have to remember the base was, first of all, our, our ancestors were producing, was producing off the land, creating. And then over time, the thought process was, well, let's not just have them consume or create it, but let's have them consume what they create as well. And we'll be the ones running it. So that is the model through the way, the way things are being done. So how do you take that model and begin to, as uh, the savior would say, be in, but not of right. Parallel is the, is the term I like to use Wisdom. parallel it. Do not, you don't have to go off into a cave. I'm not saying that that's not a way to do it. Cause there are some times and times coming where that's coming. So I leave that there for right now. We'll get into that. Um, cyclical sowing and reaping that we talked about a couple of episodes ago where things as it continues to compound he said when you see these things it's not the end yet but start getting ready it's just like when it starts getting cold you see in the leaves drop there's signs of the times so when you understand the signs of the times you know how to get ready you start to prepare a little bit more you should start saving water is that being extreme no i'm just keeping it just in case because things are beginning to shift in a way where you already seen what COVID already gave you a warning sign. It's almost like we used to do these fire drills when we were younger. You remember they like, we're going to go outside. Like, I don't feel like going outside because you got to sit outside. Right. But then when a real fire broke out, he was ready. Hopefully you were ready. You were ready. Mm -hmm. Hopefully you were ready. So all of these things that we're talking about is to try to get us prepared to begin to think a certain way, to become sensitized and have an awareness you don't have to walk in fear because the most high is in control of everything. Even the, the evil, the things we perceive to be evil, the most high is in control of that. He said, I created all these things for my pleasure and whatever I spoke is what's going to be at the end anyway. So if you understand the most high's ways, you're going to be in the right stand. But if you're following the ways of man and following the ways of the systems and the ways of this world, then you're more vulnerable. A hundred percent. You're going to be more vulnerable because that's how the system operate is in your vulnerability and in your ignorance. Ignor- I, 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 I oftentimes repeat that to my students all the time. There's a cost for ignorance. Mm. Your ignorance makes somebody rich. So it's, it's, it, it, it is up, it's up to you and you should make it a point to learn, to try to learn, acquire as much knowledge as possible to understand truths. Because, mm-hmm. you know, as the scriptures say, see, regardless of how you think the Bible is from your vantage point, there are too many gems, principles, and truths that you can never refute. Just like the mm-hmm. scripture says, what? Broad is the way that lead it to what? Destruction. <laughs> that means <laughs> the majority, broad meaning is wide, meaning there is a, there's open access to destruction. And as you can see, anything goes in today's society. And that means we have sheep just being led astray. But narrow is the way that leads to righteousness, which means... Because it's narrow, it's going to be confined, restricted. That means there's going to be only certain people, a certain lifestyle, a certain discipline, discipline that can get uh-huh. you into that realm. So mm-hmm. as we can see, when we live a life of so-called plentiful that all anything goes, carefree, without care, there is a price to pay. And our mm. education in our world right now says, be you, do it, at, live, YOLO. YOLO will get you... <laughs> To that broad way that's Dolo. gonna lead you <laughs> to destruction. <laughs> Dolo gonna lead you Dolo. <laughs> and, and, and we gotta be, cause you know, when we were younger, we could see it when we talked to you know from the older generation's perspective. Like, man, the world has changed, and what is it gonna look like ten years from now? These are questions that, as we get older, we're like, I remember such and such, but how this thing is gonna burn up? Cause we're look at what's going on today, and it just keeps on perpetuating and keeps on perpetuating but education is critical and you know for, for a lot of for, for everyone you always want to be a lifelong learner never get to the point in life where you think like you you have it figured out because we don't every day is going to be a new challenge a new opportunity to learn something new let us not be ignorant but be vigilant keep our eyes open be discerning and be able to receive from other people from the scriptures from what we can see in society because every day is you have the opportunity to learn and add to bring value to your life in order to make the change not once again not just for you 
because life is not about you. And, and that's another thing we're going to talk about in, in, the fu- in future conversations. But life at its core essence is not about you. That's why everything we do, it gives life to something else. Mm. Whether, you, whether you're working to go get a job, you're working for somebody else. Whether you're a business owner, you're providing access and opportunity for somebody else. You're providing profits or is, is, is your, your, your corporation publicly traded? That means you're doing your effort to the stakeholders for somebody else. So that whole concept of seed time and harvest, the harvest is not for you, but it's to give to other people. It's for somebody else. So you got we got to understand that our lives are not our own. And once we have that understanding, we can live in peace and harmony with nature with our brothers and our sisters in holy communion that's what it's all yeah. about this is why yeah. me and you we've never had a big outing because from our vantage point we understand each other and then mm-hmm. i can understand your personality you understand mine mm-hmm. i understand and- you know and then once you have that understanding just as two human beings even if a person's angry about something you you can understand where they're coming from because they they may value and prioritize certain things. So when certain things are not in place, like I know when it comes to the aesthetics of things, um, the artistic approach, you're a perfectionist. So if something is off, even to me, it's like, that's not a big deal. But to you, from your vantage point, your perspective, that thing sticks out like a sore thumb. So it has to be in place. And if it's yes. not in place, it's gonna throw the whole everything off. So, <laughs> so once again, as my understanding of knowing how that operates from your creative and artistic lens, I'm like, okay, yeah, that needs to be changed. Because if it's not changed, nothing else can move forward. <laughs> so let's correct it now and then move forward and live in harmony and peaceably with one another. And as we come to the end of this podcast, um, there's something that, that you said earlier mm-hmm. that I wanted to leave as a um, something to think about as we close this. Common sense is not common anymore. Mm-hmm. You That's hear true. that a lot. And the scripture says that the beginning of knowledge the fear of the Lord or the yeah. fear of the most high, meaning the awareness that there is a creative being yeah. is the beginning of true education. Because once you understand that you open yourself up to the different levels of knowing you have intuitional knowing you have so many different, we've only been taught. And that's what we talk about. The narrative based education that is very subpar and low. It just deals with what you've been told and what has been said. One plus one is two because this, da, da, da. but there's no, it's, you lose the sensitivities to your, your proclivities and, and uh, your discernment and your intuition. Like, hmm, I don't think we should go this way. I knew something was telling me that's all that there's, that's all the wisdom and knowledge that you need that actually gets you the jobs, gets you the money you need, gets you, um, into doors. Everything I've done hasn't been on paper. Like, well, you have this and da 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 da. It's my ability to understand and discern movement, the un the un, the intangibles, the things that you can't see, mm-hmm. and that's what we are. We are a spirit that has physical form, and then we transform into a new. Like before we got here, we were in the bosom of the Most High, whatever that looks like. And then we came into physical form. It's almost like, you know, like when you see those movies where someone comes through and breaks through and their face is like this, but you can't see it. And then you pop back in. That's what we are. We come into this realm for just a moment and then you pop back in. Some people are here for 80 years. Some are here for two minutes. (laughs) Some are here for six years. All the different things. And then you, you, you transform you or some would say pass away or die. But it's transformation because you're still alive. Your ancestral blood is still in you. Your great grandma, 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 all the way back to when the Most High spoke. So that's how powerful the Most High is that whatever he spoke in the beginning is still operating to this day and it will always return back. So every knee will bow and the beginning is to humble oneself. I don't know everything. And if you don't know everything, then that means you must be willing to learn and constantly stay in a posture of learning, but still be confident in your ability to discern from experience, from others' experience, from history, and from what you see right now. Because everything we see right now is the amalgamation. It's the 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 re, uh, it's the reciprocation of decisions made before us. So when we see this stuff going, it's not like people are going to be like, you know what, I'm gonna stop stealing. I'm going to stop doing this. I'm going to stop doing that. Individuals may do that. But as far as the way this thing is operating, people are not going to change and have a good heart. 
and change in that regard as a whole. So that means something new is forming. And the Most High always forms things out of the dust or out of the voidness. Mm -hmm. The earth was created out of voidness. So this new wave that's happening in these years of the return, in this years of, of, of shift that's happening, do you have the eyes to see what's happening? Can you see what's happening? Or are you just going along? Which is that broad way. The broad way is the sheep sheepfold, the sheep street. It's a bunch of people just following whatever the current trends are, whatever this person's doing, whatever that person's doing. They call those who are the simple minded simple. ones. <laughs> it's simple. But the it's ones called. who have the fear or have mm -hmm. the discernment, fear wisdom. doesn't mean like, oh, yeah, but wisdom. just a healthy awareness of the creator, the most high will then be able to discern from that perspective and then look at life from your God nature, the nature that he's placed in you, that breath of life, your God nature. When people say, I am a God, you have partial components of the most high, but none of us are God. God right. You know, <laughs> so. I, I want you to answer a question um, on the other side as we, we wrap this up, but it goes to what you just mentioned um, in regards to awareness. It's, I, it's amazing to me how many of us are very unaware of our own selves and our own nature. And mm. because of that, how we maneuver and how we interact with our surroundings in society. But that's that's something I, I want us to talk about, you know, as we as because it, it, it's, it's all wrapped in how education is fed to us as well. You know, mm -hmm. growing up where well, I'm going to say growing up because I don't even remember anything, but I was born in England. And I know a lot of the countries in what's up, the fam? Come again? I said, "What's up, fam?" <laughs> <laughs> Mate, or whatever they say. But you know, a lot of the African countries were colonized by the Brits. And with that in mind, when that European regime comes in and puts their standards and their culture on someone else's territory, they also brought their education system with them as well, which is still in place to this day. So even when we were over there talking to the students, you know, like the like like for example, how they prioritize English. There's so many different languages and tongues there, but in the elites, I it the way you can speak in English and the way you can communicate in English separates you. You're you're now you're an intellectual. You're, you're of high class esteem because of your mm. ability to speak English, which is somebody else's language, i.e. the language of the colonizer. But it, it is amazing, like, how we can just go along with that and, like, hmm, we learn about the Queens, the Elizabeth, all these people that have nothing to do with you, nothing to do with who you are, your identity, nothing. But even to this day, regardless of when your day of freedom and independence, you still carry on traditions, you carry on the, the, the mnemonics as well as the instruction from the colonizers to this day and it's still being perpetuated. We haven't stopped yet. Mm. And th this is something we need, we need to discuss because when we talk to our brothers and sisters, I don't even, like I said, that whole idea of being self-aware. A lot of us aren't aware, you know? But, you know, but this is a great discussion. You know, thanks everyone for staying tuned and watching us and being a part of this conversation. You know, leave comments, like, subscribe. You know, if you need any more information, would like to know more about the various things and initiatives that the Ashan Foundation is a part of, www.ashanfoundation.org. You, you can have all the information right there at your fingertips. But until we meet again, we'll see you on the other side.